Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you from whatever country or continent you are watching this convention. Today, we are honored to have as our speaker of the annual Besant Lecture, a very distinguished person who has been a friend of the Theosophical Society for many years. She is the Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines. A lawyer by profession, our guest speaker had worked to give free legal service for farmers, women, and other people who are unable to afford hiring lawyers to defend their rights. Four years ago, when our guest speaker was elected as Vice President of the Philippines, the elected president came from an opposing party. As a result, attempts to give her a cabinet position did not work as she was seen by the president as coming from the opposition. Thus, in carrying out programs and missions, she virtually had no access to government resources and funds aside from the relatively small budget of her office. Any projects she undertook had to be supported by volunteers and funds raised from the private sector. It is due to this that she has been widely admired because despite the absence of support from the government, she has been able to launch extensive nationwide projects for marginalized people that were accomplished through volunteers and with donations coming from a wide variety a wide spectrum of citizens, even from among very poor people. Her programs have included opening livelihood opportunities, community enhancement initiatives, partnership projects between private companies and local government units, youth leadership training, innovative approaches in education that benefit poor students, disaster relief, and more recently, responding to the COVID crisis. Originally, Vice President Robredo was scheduled to join us in the questions and answer portion after her recorded talk, which would be hosted by our international president, Tim Boyd. But due to unexpected changes in her schedule, she'll be unable to join us this morning. Instead, we will be showing additional videos after the talk. Fellow members, Friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines, Lenny Robredo. My warmest greetings to all the members and guests of the Theosophical Society and congratulations on a successful 145th International Convention. It is an honor to deliver the Besant Lecture for this convention. Thank you for inviting me to join you today. Amid the pandemic that limited our capacity to come together, gatherings like this, even online, are not only important, they are also small victories in themselves, giving us a sense of stability as we slowly reclaim our lives from this crisis. COVID-19 stands as humanity's greatest challenge in the immediate term. Here in the Philippines, many Filipinos are still getting infected by the virus every day. Frontliners are bearing the brunt of an overwhelmed healthcare system, and the inequality gap continues to widen as those in the margins feel the impact more so than others. And as we continue to grapple with the impact of this pandemic, we also had to face powerful typhoons over the recent weeks leaving massive destruction and loss of livelihood in our communities. Elsewhere around the world, economists are shrinking and entire populations edge closer to poverty and hunger. COVID-19 has changed the world as we know it. It has changed the way we live, the way we work, the way we learn, and the way we love. It has disrupted even our spiritual lives. I am sure that the students of religion, philosophy, and science you know this well. Here in the Philippines, the pandemic did not spare even our places of worship, places where we used to come together as a community to find strength in God and in each other. 
many traditional religious activities had to be temporarily suspended, including in some places the work of ministering to the poor and homeless. It is during this time of such drastic and breakneck change that we are called to pause and breathe, to gather our strength and resolve, to look back and reflect on the lessons of the pandemic. Among the most crucial of these lessons is something that we are reminded of due to the speed and scale of the contagion, the interwoven nature of the challenges it posed, and the concerted effort needed to combat it. We are all interconnected. Our destinies are all intertwined. Even before the pandemic, we have seen this in our everyday lives. The joys and sorrows of others, even of total strangers, resonate with us. At work, we see how the energies of entire economies flow through everyone, so that when even the least of us suffers, the rest is held back from fulfilling their utmost potential. The pandemic has only emphasized this interconnectedness. We know how just one positive case puts entire communities at risk. And as more people get sick, Entire healthcare systems experience the strain. Businesses are forced to fold, jobs are lost, people grow hungry, economies plummet, and governments are left with even fewer resources to address problems that begin to stack one on top of the other. The reality has become even more stark. We are all but individual weaves in the singular tapestry of humanity. The vulnerability of the least of us is tied to the health and security of everyone. The suffering of one contributes to the suffering of all, in the same way that the progress of the last, the least, and the lost contributes to the progress of all. Embracing this interconnectedness means resisting the impulse to shrink into islands of self-interest, and it offers a pathway not only to survival, but perhaps towards a better normal. A world where old inequalities, old exploitative structures, and old every-man-for-himself mindsets can be replaced. The keys to this better normal, perhaps, already lie deep within our psyches in the form of values that remained intact in our cultures and communities despite the relentless drive towards greater material progress. In the Philippines, one such value is Bayanihan which links heroism or bayani to the community, the bayan. To engage in bayanihan means to act together with the community, to exhibit communal responsibility and the spirit of cooperation, solidarity, and collaboration. Know that the only way through any challenge is together. At the office of the Vice President, we have been fortunate witnesses to the power of bayanihan in our daily work. All the initiatives in our COVID response operations, whether it's the donation drives, PPE production, dorms and shuttle services for medical frontliners, app-based community marts, or projects for the recently unemployed, for small entrepreneurs, or for out-of-school youth, all of this became successful because of Bayanihan. Because Filipinos from all walks of life from big companies to ordinary citizens came together, helped out, and did what they can. Our COVID relief operations began on March 13, days before the enhanced community quarantine was imposed over Luzon, seeing how hospitals in Metro Manila were at that point already grappling with the virus. We talked to frontliners. We saw their experiences. We tried to understand what they were going through. We found out that PPE sets topped their list of needs. Many had no choice but to place themselves at great risk while handling patients because they didn't have the required protective gear. Our office, with our meager budget, appropriated a little over 5 million pesos for PPE sets, which we distributed to hospitals in Metro Manila. But as the days went by, we saw that the need was much bigger and that it would continue as the country deals with the spread of the disease. We tapped a private partner, the Kaya Natin Movement, for an online donation drive to fund PPE sets and food and care packages. Through this donation drive, we found ourselves overwhelmed 
by the outpouring of support from our fellow Filipinos. Thousands of our countrymen pitched in, from students, ordinary employees, overseas workers, business owners, because like us, they wanted to be there for our frontliners in whatever way they can. Every donation, big or small, was welcome and much appreciated. In the end, we were able to collect more than 61 million pesos. Having the funds, the next challenge was the unsteady supply and fluctuating prices of PPE items, mainly because they were being imported from other countries. That was when we decided to explore the production of PPEs locally. Volunteers from the fashion and garments industry came out in full force to help design these alternative PPEs in close coordination with medical experts who made sure that the design and materials were up to standard. With these designs in hand, we looked for community-based seamstresses. We met widows and mothers who lost their loved ones to senseless killings brought about by the so-called drug war of our government, which had been raging in our country for years and claimed the lives of countless innocents. They willingly extended their help to sew PPEs for our frontliners. We partnered with groups of urban poor women with small and medium-sized garment shop owners who were only too happy to help because their sewers would have income during lockdown. Last June, we had the opportunity to visit our partner communities. Here are some of them. Papunta tayo ngayon sa, andito na tayo sa Payatas. Magsa-surprise visit tayo dun sa mga mananahi. Um, mananahi na mga widows and orphans ng EJK victims. As isa sila sa mga communities na nagtatahe ng ating mga babies. Hindi nila alam na dadating ako. So, sorpresahin natin. Malapit na tayo. So, excited din kami kasi first time ko sila mabibisita. Hindi lang sila yung bibisitahin natin ngayong araw, pati yung ibang communities kung puntahan din natin. Kasama sa mga nananahi ng PPEs para sa atin ang mga kapamilya ng EJK victims sa ilalim ng Solidarity of Orphans and Widows or SO sa Payatas. Ang Project SO ay isang inisyatibo ng ina ng lupang pangako parish ng Vincentian priests, pastoral workers at iba pang tumutulong sa mga pamilyang ito na makabangon mula sa trahedya ng pagkawala ng mga mahal sa buhay. Sa ating pagbisita, nakilala ko ang mga lola, nanay, asawa at mga ulila ng nananahe ng protective suits para sa atin, mabibilis sila magtrabaho at masinop sa mga materyales na ating ibinibigay. Nakakatuwang marinig mula sa ilan sa kanila kung paano sila natulungan ng ating proyekto. Nandyan yung nakapagpaayos ng bubong, nakapagpasimento ng sahig ng bahay, at nakapagpabakod rin. Hindi ka lang pala kasi. Technician pa. Hey, Kaya magtrabaho ah. Pagmula po dito, pa-ibigay ah, pa yung ginagawa nila. Pa-ibigay. Hello po. Hindi na ako makakabilas kasi bawa. <laughs> Welcome po. Welcome po. At, at, at ano lang kami, Father, nag-surprise visit para magpasalamat. Yung mga ano po nila, nakakatulong mo talaga sa amin. Kaya yung lockdown po, wala ko talaga kami live visit. Ito sa ating yun, diba? Ito buo na. Buo na po yun. Buo na po yun. Kulang-kulang. 
Isa rin sa mga natulungan natin sa pamamagitan ng local production ng PPEs ang mga tagagawad kalinga community sa Smoky Mountains sa Tondo, Manila. Ayun yung mga ano, <laughs> May mga miyembro dito sa tinatawag na Gawad Kalinga Paradise Heights na nananahi na dati ng mga gamit gaya ng bags at coin purse pero natigil ito dahil sa COVID-19 pandemic. Ang kapalit sa mga panahong ito ang paggawa ng protective suits natin. <laughs> Malaking tulong rin sa atin ang pakikiisa ng ilang mga negosyo sa ating inisyatibo. Isa sa mga kasama natin sa OVP House of PPEs ang Solisal Corporation, isang local business na gumagawa ng school uniforms. Nakikibahagi rin sa ating local production ang Isadora Fashion Line sa Malabon, isang garment manufacturing company na nananahin ng ready-to-wear clothes at corporate attire. <laughs> Partner rin natin ang GTVL Manufacturing Industries Incorporated na engage apparel manufacturing. Ang kumpanya ang may hawak ng sole license para sa jockey brand dito sa Pilipinas. I know all your products unless you unless you have, you have additional ones. But the, the ones in the early 90s I know everything. <laughs> Pinento ko nga sa kanila yung pinagdaanan ko nung ako ay nagtuturo pa at estudyante pa. Isa sa sideline ko yung magtinda ng jockey. Kaya sobrang happy nung occasion na nabisita ko yung kanilang factory. Never na naisip ko na mangyayari yung pagkakataon na to na yung pinanggaling ako nakakatulong sa sakita nung nakaraang panahon ay nabisita ko. Ayan, 
Malaki rin ang naitutulong sa atin ng Power Fashion Incorporated na affiliate ng mga kilalang clothing brands na Bayo, Unika Iha at Vice Versa. Ang negosyo ng mag-asawang Ana at Leo Lagon ang pinakamalaking supplier natin ng protective suits. So lahat ng fabrics namin, mababa ang content ng bawal sa inyo. Oh. isipin na kahit wala pa yung COVID-19 pandemic, yung mag-asawang Ana sa kasi Leo ay matagal nang tumutulong sa mga proyekto natin sa OVT. Naalala ko sa mga nagdaang mga sakuna, parati na tayong tinutulungan ng mag-asawang ito. Kaya nakakatuwa nung nabisita natin yung factory nila. Nung nakikipagkwentuhan tayo sa mga mananahe, sila mismo yung nagsabi na napakabait talaga ng mag-asawang ito. Sa gitna ng krisis na ito, alam natin na hindi madali para sa marami nating mga kababayan mula sa mga komunidad na ating tinutulungan hanggang sa mga nagpapatakbo ng mga negosyo na ating kaagapay at kanilang mga empleyado. Sa kabila nito, nakakagaan ng loob kahit paano na ang ating inisyatibo ay naging daan para sa marami na makapag-ambag sa pagtulong sa ating frontliners habang kumikita para sa kanika nila mga pamilya. Ang local production ng protective suits ay ating sinimulan sa paglalayong mapabilis ang pagtugon sa panawagan para sa PPE items na ipinapaabot sa atin ng mga ospital at iba pang institusyon sa gitna ng COVID-19 crisis. Pero mula rito, ay nakita natin hindi lamang ang husay ng ating mga kababayan, kundi ang diwa ng bayanihan. Ang bawat protective suit na nakakarating sa ating frontliners ay bunga ng malasakit at pagmamahal na paulit-ulit na papatunayan sa ating pagtutulungan. With the help of our partners who kept their hearts open and listened to what is being asked of them, we were able to reach more than 29,432 frontliners across the country by providing at least 441,480 PPE sets and 39,048 locally produced PPE suits. Aside from protective gear, we were also able to send food and care packages and medical supplies to over 1,694 institutions across all regions. When the enhanced community quarantine started in March, we heard the stories of many health workers who were unable to go to work or were forced to walk long hours just to get to the hospital. This was another gap that needed to be filled. As lockdowns also put transportation to a halt, we launched a free shuttle service for the frontliners in Metro Manila. We conducted our shuttle services following measures similar to a bus rapid transit system. There were designated stop points where passengers were picked up and dropped off. The daily schedule and updates were posted on our social media pages, adjusting as we went along to ensure that frontliners who needed this service most had the rides they needed. Because we are a very small office, we invited volunteers to help us. During our first run, about 300 volunteers answered the call and served as our conductors and dispatchers, some of them waking up before sunrise so they can work the earliest routes. Allow me to share with you some of the inspiring stories of volunteers we met along the way. No March 17, yun yung pinakaunang araw ng enhanced community quarantine, pumapasok yung mga balita na ang daming mga health personnel ang hindi nakakapasok dahil walang public transport as the reports were coming in, inaabangan namin at hindi na kami papakali ng staff. Alam namin kung gaano ka-urgent para sa mga health workers at iba pang frontliners yung public transport. Sinabi ko sa aming staff na, bakit kaya hindi tayo mag-offer ng free shuttle service? Yung angat buhay partner namin na pinakauna na nag-respond, yung Ubi Express. Nung umuo sila na pwedeng mapahiram yung mga bus nila para magamit for shuttle service, Nagpaalam kami kay Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana kung pwede kami payagan na makapagbigay nga ng free shuttle service. Yun, in less than 24 hours, nagawa namin yung lahat. Kapag-ugnayan sa pamahalaan, makapag-ugnayan sa private partners, linat namin yung mga ruta. Ang daming OVP staff nag-volunteer nag maging dispatcher, nag-volunteer na mag-conductor, nag-volunteer na mag-admin officers. 
So March 18, larga na. Ano talaga, parang trial and error sa amin. Nag-start kami na 6 routes, uh, natapos ng 8 routes. Nag-start kami na Ube Express lang yung partner. Nung nagdagdag ng rota, naging partner na din namin yung Diamond Motor Corporation at Pilipinas Auto Group Incorporated. Yung Sea Oil Foundation, naging partner namin. Dahil kulang kami ng staff, nag-call na kami sa volunteers. During the entire one week run, nagkaroon kami ng 176 na external volunteers. Tumutulong din maging dispatcher, maging conductor and everything. Umandar talaga siya, hindi lang dahil sa partners, pero dahil sa OVP staff, saka dahil sa volunteers. So ito talaga collaboration ng gobyerno, saka ng private na citizens. At napakaganda kasi maraming magagandang kwento. Merong birthday nila, nag-volunteer. Merong wedding anniversary, yung ginawa ng mag-asawa, nag-volunteer. Ano talaga? From all walks of life. Kaya ito naman yung maganda sa exercise. Kasi mararamdaman mo na lahat na tao nag-pitch in. Ako po si Butch, isang volunteer. Ito na yung ambag ko sa ating mga frontliners na araw-araw sila yung pinakakailangan natin ngayon sa ating lipunan. Even though ito lang yung uh, maliit na bagay na may contribute ko, malaking bagay ito para sa mga natutulungan ng Office of the Vice President, yung mga taong at yung mga frontliners natin na araw-araw hindi sila pwedeng kumigil sa pagtatrabaho nila dahil sila yung kinakailangan natin ngayon. Naisip ako mag-volunteer dahil uh, kailangan na rin ng bayan eh. Gusto ko yung makatulong sa mga kapwa ko. Medyo may nervyos kasi nga, pandemic eh. Uh, pero binigyan naman kami ng mga PPEs para makaiwas sa mga frontliners. Pero alam ko may nervyos din sila pero Tumikilas dahil sa nga, para nga sa bayan, hindi iniinda yung mga kung isasahurin ba o wala. Parang makatulong sa bayan, yun ang, yun ang uh, nakita kong ginagawa nila. Parang feeling ko po, ano eh, parang hindi siya, hindi dinakadalawang isip kung sakali man na nung tinanong ako na gusto ba ako, gusto ko po mag-volunteer. Parang wala eh, walang ganun. Parang mas inisip ko agad, ano yung pwede natin gawin? So nung may gagawin na, agad-agad naman tayong tumugon doon sa hamon na sumama dito sa shuttle service po. Halo-halong emosyon po. Pero overall, mas nanginibabo yung fulfillment. Kasi po, ano, parang yung mukha ng mga nasasakay mo sa daanan kapag mula sa paglalakad ng dalawa tatlong oras, masasakay mo sila. Priceless po yun. Salamat din sa kanilang lahat, sa Ube Express, sa Diamond Motor Corporation, sa Pilipinas Auto Group Incorporated, sa Sea Oil. Uh, kasi without them, hindi namin magagawa yung sembisyong ito. At syempre, pasalamat din sa lahat ng mga taong tumulong. Sabi ko kanina yung external volunteers. Ito mga OVP staff na nag-volunteer, ano sila, naging dispatchers o doktor naging utility, drivers namin yung nag-volunteer para makatulong sa pag-shuttle din sa mga bahay-bahay ng mga volunteers namin na nagpa-participate. Pati yung Vice Presidential Security, tumulong din sa amin yung nagpo-provide ng security sa akin, sa kasa aming opisina. Nag-volunteer din sumasama sa mga bus. Nag-secure na yung ating mga frontliners maging maayos. May OVP staff na work from home pero sila yung nagde-design ng mga mapa, ng mga rota, Sila yung nag-aasikaso ng uh, information dissemination. Sila yung nagla-live updates both sa Twitter saka sa Facebook. 
Uh, merong mga naka-assign, naka-duty, tumasagot sa mga tanong sa social media. So, lahat na ito. Lahat na ito gusto namin pasalamatan. Binilang namin more than 10,000 frontliners at mga kababayan natin yung natulungan ng shuttle service natin. Ito po isang malakim pasasalamat, isang karangalan po namin na makasama kayo sa inyong paglalakbay. At isang karangalan namin na kahit papano nakapag-ambag kami. At kahit papano napagaan namin yung kahirapan na pinagdadaanan ng mga bayani natin sa panahon na to, mga taong nag-aalay ng kanilang buhay para sa atin lahat. Throughout the duration of our shuttle service, many of our passengers were very thankful. Medical frontliners got to work safely, supermarket employees no longer had to walk for hours, pregnant women got to travel more comfortably, our rides bringing them closer to home. Our volunteers often got the chance to talk to our regular passengers, and that helped us find another gap to fill. Because shuttle services were limited mostly within Metro Manila, we received numerous requests for temporary accommodations for frontliners. We heard the same thing in discussions with our social media followers, and soon enough from the news. Again, with the help of private partners, we heeded this call. And in the process, we got to help many of our frontliners, those who lived far from their workplaces, those who opted to stay away from their families, afraid that they might bring the virus home, and those who were shunned by neighbors who were afraid of being infected. Since we started on March 23, we have been able to open 12 dormitories in Metro Manila and temporary shelters in provinces far to the north and south of the capital. As of today, one of these dorms remains operational. Even with social distancing in place, our partners and donors have helped us provide a sense of home and comfort to our frontliner guests through additional amenities and assistance. This include free haircut services, motorbikes they can borrow, washing machines and dryers, laundry detergent, self-care essentials, hot meals and drinks, and even Wi-Fi connection. To date, our dormitories have served nearly 500 frontliners, among them doctors, nurses, and other medical workers, administrative personnel, pharmacists, security personnel, clerks, and even bank tellers. When the Department of Education announced that classes will be offered through blended learning, many teachers and parents expressed great concern. Many felt unprepared. They lacked the access to internet and technology at home. They share their deep anxiety regarding whether they could pull off this new mode of learning. Our office immediately responded and launched an initiative called Bayanihan Eskwela. We knew that at the core of this anxiety lies a lack of confidence, not knowing what to do and how to do it, especially with meager resources they had on hand. Treading unfamiliar ground with little to hold on to, except modeled policies and directives. As always, we sought to address this through Bayanihan. Together with Kaya Natin, we also made a call for a gadget donation drive. Since many of our teachers and parents feel unprepared as we shift to distance learning, we also sought the help of subject matter experts from the College of Education at the University of the Philippines in producing a series of videos that tackle techniques, approaches, and other tips for teaching and assisting our learners. We worked on this together with several talents in the creatives industry, production houses, ad agencies, artists, musicians, all of whom work pro bono and in their own homes to make the videos. We also set up community learning hubs, safe alternative spaces for learners, especially for those who live in the poorest and most remote communities, which more often than not, do not have stable internet access, if at all. As of today, we have 18 sites which are operational, benefiting 2,888 students across different pilot sites. Recently, we had the opportunity to visit two of our learning hubs. Here is how we made the program possible with the help of our partners at the local government unit, private sector, and our tireless volunteers.
So ngayong araw po, yung pinakauna natin ginawa on a Monday morning, bisitahin ng ating community learning hub sa Pasig. Dahil ito po yung first official day ng ating mga community learning hubs, hindi lang po sa Pasig. Pero meron pa po tayong hubs, meron po tayong isa sa Taytay, meron po tayong dalawa sa Lucena, meron po tayo sa Himamaylan, meron po tayo sa San Jose, Camarines Sur, meron po tayo sa Tabaco, Albay. Pero last week po, nagkaroon na ng dry run. Pinost ko po ito sa aking Facebook, yung mga pictures na nakukuha namin, nakuha namin from the dry run. Sobrang nakaka-happy pong tingnan dahil uh, nakikita po namin kung papano, gaano ka-importante na may nafe-fill po talaga siyang gaps. Yung mga reports po namin ng mga, mga community learning hubs po namin, sobrang pasalamat po kami sa tutors natin. Uh, sobrang pasalamat po tayo sa partners, hindi ko na po iisa-isahin. Dahil kung wala po sila, hindi talaga ito magiging... Um, Magiging totoo. Um, kanina po sa Pasig, uh, nag-Facebook live ako kanina para ipakita sa inyo yung lugar. Pero nakausap ko po mismo yung mga magulang na nandun. Sobrang nagpapasalamat po sila kasi sabi po nila sobrang hirap talaga na walang face-to-face. -face. Lalo pa kasi yung kanilang mga anak ay nangangailangan ng tulong. May nakausap po akong dalawang estudyante kanina, isang grade 2, isang grade 6. Pareho din po yung kwento. Sabi po nila ang happy daw na meron silang ibang bata na kasabay sa pag-aral. Yung kabutihan po ng Community Learning Hubs halos nasa, na, nasa katabi lang ng bahay nila. Yung mga hindi pa nagbabasa, hindi pa nagsusulat. Kagaya po sa Pasig, tinignan ko po yung individual na assessment ng mga bata. Happy sila, nat natulungan sila sa math. So, maraming mga difficult learners ang talagang makikinabang. Um, ngayon po ay ongoing na yung second batch ng ating mga tutors. Uh, yung second sa third batch ng tutors natin for our 55 other community learning hubs that we are set to open. So, ang happy po, uh, ito po ay kung merong mga lugar na palagay nyo, makakatulong sa lugar nyo, open-open po kami makapag-partners nyo. The biggest leaps, the most impactful actions in our work were only made possible by Bayanihan. But Bayanihan, we have also found, is as much about listening as it is about action. Here, we talk of listening in its truest, deepest sense. Hearing people's stories, being there as they tell it, looping them in, and valuing their perspectives. And the more that the people are looped in, the more they recognize that we are all in this together, then the more galvanized they become, the more we are able to do together. This year's convention highlights awareness, and often the first step to that awareness is listening. Listening to what the other needs, to what is being asked of us, to what the times call on us to do. This means shedding the idea that we always know what is best. It requires authentic human engagement, which is built by going to communities, building affinity with them, and keeping our hearts open to them, being humble and vulnerable. All of our initiatives and many more were only made possible because so many groups and individuals were ready to engage in such listening, and afterwards, roll up their sleeves or dig into their pockets to respond to the call of their fellow human beings. This is why I have faith that humanity can overcome this crisis. The challenge is great, but as I always say, the opportunity is always greater. The opportunity to engage, to help, to pitch in. This does not mean, however, that the onus to respond to the challenges of our times rests on the individual. The latest biodiversity report of the United Nations warns us, without fundamental shifts in how we treat the world and view our place in it, future pandemics will happen more often. They will cause even worse damage on economies, 
and they will take more lives. Our unsustainable exploitation of the environment, our insatiable consumption, our extractive approach to progress, these are the same things that increase the prospect of prospective crisis. Considering how deeply ingrained these are in our way of life, the forecast is gloomy. But that is not to say that we are powerless. Our first order of business must be to address the deep inequalities that have made this pandemic much more virulent, disruptive, and deadly. By now, it is clear. When this pandemic ends, we cannot simply return to our old ways, as if all the deaths and suffering were just a bump in a journey towards inevitable doom. Future generations must look back upon this year and see what we have learned. Beyond wearing face masks or moving our lives online or practicing physical distancing, we must unlearn old self-absorbed paradigms and find new ways to live, ways that are more humane, that are sustainable, that reflect a deeper awareness of how we are interconnected with each other, with those we share this planet with, and with the universe we inhabit. Our challenge today is not only to deal with the present, it is to reimagine this very future, a world that is fairer, that is kinder, a world that recognizes and builds on our interconnectedness. A world where even the least of our sisters and brothers can live in dignity. The novelist Arundhati Roy said it eloquently, and I quote, Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world. Close quote. Reimagining a better normal entails casting aside old paradigms and rediscovering what truly makes us human. We are human because despite our insecurities and the temptations towards self-interest, we feel an impulse to reach out, to help others, to pull together, knowing that the survival of one depends on the efforts of all. We are human because despite the darkness, we dig deep into ourselves and find the light to move forward. Every step animated by grit and resolve by our human spirit itself. What is asked of us is clear, to widen our circles of compassion, to look for more spaces where we can work with those who share our values and our vision, to combine our networks and resources so we can achieve more than we would if we acted alone, to find more of us to do the work, more of us to rise to the moment, more of us to widen the path for others to follow in our pursuit of the world we imagine. May this occasion be an opportunity for us to reflect on and celebrate the things that truly bind humanity together. The ideals we hold in common, the dreams we all share, the goals we all aspire to. May you emerge from this convention with meaningful insights, stronger linkages, and surer and steadier steps towards the future. Congratulations, thank you, and mabuhay. Thank you, Vice President Lenny Robredo, for kindly gracing our convention with your message on the possibility of drawing out the best in people by giving opportunities of service to citizens from all walks of life. And this you did, despite the very limited budget of your office, and tapping the volunteerism spirit of private citizens. This brings out solidarity, a selfless spirit, in bringing about the betterment of society. As the Vice President said, this draws out the compassionate heart of people. Hence, in addition to the physical benefits of what they are doing, 
they themselves are changed to become aware of how ordinary citizens can make a difference in the transformation of society. This is a change at the root level in the hearts of the people. As I've mentioned earlier, we will no longer have the questions and answers session due to a sudden change in the schedule of the vice president. So we will be showing several videos for our convention instead. Thank you all for being with us during the session. Now I will turn over to Shikhar uh, for our videos. Shikhar.